Hey Threadheads, Darren here. Welcome back to another fly tying tutorial. Today we're going to be shifting gears a little bit and we're going to be doing this little bucktail smelt fly pattern. This is a pattern that comes from Jim Bernstein out of Maine. There's a few different versions of this floating around on the internet, but this one I took from Don Wilson's smelt patterns and it includes a big variety of bucktail colors we've got white yellow red silver doctor blue lilac purple as well as a little bit of crystal flash and some peacock hurl in there that's a lot jammed into one hook so we're just going to use a little bit of each but as you can see it kind of all melts together really nicely and gives you a really beautifully colored smelt imitation don't forget to leave a comment down below and I'll get your name entered into the next draw that I do for some of the flies we tie on the channel, as well as some stickers, uh, fly tying materials, and whatever else I can fit in there. All right, let's have a look at the material list and get started. Okay, so let's get a fresh hook in the vise. Today we're going to be using a uh, one of the new signature Mustads. We're going to be using the L873665A, and that's the uh, modern version of the 3665A. I like the newer one a little bit better. It's a little bit more of a stout uh, hook, a little bit thicker wire, a little bit longer. We're going to be using 70D black thread. And we'll just tie on right in behind the eye. We're going to grab our first material. We're going to be using some gold, silver, mylar tinsel. And we're going to be using a large size. And if you're using uni, that's the number 10. Just gives you a fuller coverage and it's easier to kind of overlap the wraps as you go along. So we're going to tie this with the gold side facing up. And we'll go ahead and we'll just... Don't have to do touching turns, but we don't want to uh, make any obvious bumps underneath the uh, body here because we're just going to be doing uh, the flat tinsel on top. So wind it down just past the hook point, trying to keep your thread as flat as possible and then wind back up. We don't have to go right behind the eye. We want to leave a little bit of space. We're going to create a little bit of a throat on this fly or a gill plate, uh, gills, whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to add a couple half hitches here just to kind of help secure that thread, make sure it doesn't bump off on us. There's a couple different ways you can wind this up. If you don't have a rotary vise, you want to do it uh, hand over hand like this, uh, but that can be a little bit tedious. And if you do have a rotary vise, the best thing to do is just kind of give a constant tension to that tinsel, kind of pull it out at a 45 degree angle and just wind it up and it will just kind of uh, help tension itself and it'll give it a more consistent uh, overlap as you go up. Now you should probably put your thread in a bobbin holder when you do this and don't do what I did here. So we'll just go ahead and we'll catch off that thread here as awkwardly as possible. So once you got the tinsel secured. Uh, of course you don't want to let off the tension on that because that will unwind and leave you with a big mess. We'll go ahead and we'll just tie down the tag end of that and we're just going to add a couple half hitches here and we're going to cut off this thread and we're just going to switch in our throat color here. So you could just tie in the other thread without having to uh, tie it off, but we're going to show you a couple different ways there. So this is the uh, flat wax nylon and it's a hot red color. So it uh, fluoresces really nice under black light, under UV light. So we're just going to go back over the body a little bit. And we're just going to create a nice little gill plate and this is going to be right behind our head and it's going to be visible underneath the wing. So you don't have to have it too big. Um, a few millimeters should do. We'll go ahead and we'll rewind on our black 70D thread. And we just want to catch the flat wax nylon we just put on and make sure that we kind of tie that off. 
snip off the tag end. And once we've got that, that uh, flat wax nylon secured with a few wraps of thread, we can go ahead and trim that off and that should be fine. All right, so now we can start layering up our bucktail. So the first color we're gonna take is a little bit of white bucktail. And you don't need much. And I tend to take a small amount and I will pull out a few of the fibers. If you've got some that are really kinky or really long or just don't wanna play right, you can get rid of those and thin it down a bit. Um, we just wanna kind of pull the longest ones out and kind of match them up. Uh, if you want, you can use a hair stacker at this point to get everything perfectly lined up, but personally, I like a little bit of variation in the length of the hairs. You just want to make sure you have nothing that's too long, too kind of crazy kinked or anything like that. And uh, just want to make sure that we're going to have a somewhat uniform tail that's going to uh, taper out naturally once it gets wet. So we'll just tie those on top. We trim the butt ends. And now we're just going to make sure that they sit down flat. We don't want them to flare up a little bit. You can see with that little bit of the uh, flat wax nylon there, we created a little bit of a bump. So we just want to get over that so that the hair doesn't flare. We're going to take two, stri two uh, strands of pearl crystal flash. And we're going to tie that in along the side of the hook. And that's going to represent the lateral line of this smelt pattern. So we'll just start by tying it in on one side and then we will just pull those strands out and we will uh, pull them across the front of the hook after we've tied them in and tie them down along the other side of the hook shank. You just wanna be careful when you're tying materials in at the head that they, you're not gonna be using too many wraps of thread because that can get fairly large fairly quickly, especially when you've got so many different colors of uh, bucktail here. So we're going to take our next color. We're going to use a little bit of yellow bucktail. And again, you want to just kind of make sure that you're very sparse with the amount of bucktail that you're selecting. And if I had to count, I would say we're probably using somewhere between 8 to 12 strands of bucktail. Just a uh, wild guess. If you want to make this fuller, by all means, go ahead and add a few extra hairs into each layer. So we just measured that out, lined everything up. We'll cut the butts and tie it in. You just want to be careful that you're not putting the materials too close to the eye of the hook either, because then you'll kind of build a square eye. So I like to just taper them back just a touch every time I tie in a new color. And we're just going to repeat this process a few times. Some of the uh, patterns that I saw for this one in particular omitted this red, but I think it adds a really nice uh, little color to that mix. Kind of gives you the primary color range of the uh, red yellow and blue. You see that in a lot of different uh, smelt patterns. We're going to add a little bit of silver doctor blue. We're getting near the top side of the wing. And again, you just notice how sparse the amount of hairs that I use here are. And you can kind of eyeball it. If you feel like it's too thin, you can add a little, a few more hairs, or if you feel like you're getting too thick on the next layer, you can add a few less. And those will kind of mix together a little bit, but they should stay somewhat layered up. So we're going to grab some lilac bucktail. If you don't have the lilac, uh, you can go ahead and just use a uh, purple in place of the lilac and the purple. This is just a kind of a nice color to have uh, an in-between color, I guess, transition color. But if you tie a lot of smelt patterns, lilac comes in handy quite often. And finally, we're going to use a little bit of purple bucktail. And again, every time we do this, we clip, we uh, pull out anything that's really wonky in there and kind of line the tips up a little bit. And then we trim the butt ends off and then tie them in. You can kind of see the head starting to get a little bit bigger on this fly. Just want to kind of 
use as few wraps as possible for each of the uh, different layers that we tie in here. We want to try and maintain the ability to create a nice tapered head. We don't want a head that's too small, of course. We want to be able to put some eyes on this pattern. So uh, I'm pretty happy with the size of this head here. So the last material we're going to use in our wing, we're just going to top it with a few peacock curls from an eye. And we're going to use somewhere between four and uh, six peacock curls. That should be plenty. And we'll just measure that up with the end of our bucktail. We'll give that a few wraps just to secure it in place. And then we'll go ahead and we'll cut off the butt ends of those. And then we can add a few more thread wraps and just clean that up a little bit. And this is a good sized head. We're going to be able to paint a nice pair of eyes onto this uh, black head. If you don't want to paint, you can go ahead and use some stick on eyes and uh, just coat them with a generous amount of head lacquer or something like a uh, bone dry. Let's so go ahead and we'll whip finish the fly. And we'll give that a snip. Now we're going to get out the paint. And for this, I usually use a toothpick and I'll cut the toothpick down the middle for the uh, bigger piece of the eye. And we'll just go ahead and get a little bit on the end. And then we'll tip our fly over. Usually I'll be doing this at the end of tying a batch, so I won't do it for each fly. I'll wait till I've got half a dozen tied and then I'll do it all as uh, part of an assembly line. So the paint I've got here isn't the best for these eyes. It's a little bit too thick, so we'll have to finesse that a little bit off camera. You can kind of see how it's pretty thick, so it's leaving little bits of globs there. So we'll clean that up here as best we can. And as it dries, those will kind of uh, dry into the head as well. So we've given that a little bit of time to dry. We're going to go ahead and we're going to add a pupil into that. And you can use just a regular um, toothpick. I use the round toothpicks. Just try and get a little glob of uh, paint or nail polish on those. And you just want to give it a dab right in the middle if you can. And if it doesn't come out all that well, you can go back and touch that up a little bit later. That's what we're going to do in this case. You just want a nice little representation. And of course, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, the only one really scrutinizing your flies is going to be you and other fishermen. Fish don't seem to care quite as much. All right now that we've given that some time to dry, we're going to go ahead. We're just going to give that a nice quick coat of bone dry. If you don't have bone dry, you can go ahead and just use uh, like a Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails works really well or a Loon Hardhead. Is, uh, those are my two go-to head cements for different flies. And we'll just go ahead and we'll zap that with our UV light. And that'll harden up that bone dry. And just notice before I zap it, I kind of pull all the fibers back just so that they're set in place. Just so that their uh, fibers aren't flying all over the place. Hey fly tires, thanks for stopping by and checking out my fly tying videos. If you enjoyed the video and want to show your support, hit the thumbs up and share it to your social networks. I hope you consider subscribing to the channel and if you do, be sure to hit the bell icon to get notifications on my latest fly patterns, tips and reviews. If you have a question or comment, leave a message below. You'll also be entered into the next draw for some of the flies I tie and a few stickers. Until next time, this is Darren saying, keep a hook in your vice. Cheers.